Uh, you never seen that green chair right over here by the wall, man. Which one? This one or that one? No, no, it's in the green. Not right there. Not one. Right here, man. Yo, I carry these off the way. They're really killing my wrist. I'm not gonna have any problem with you. Either. I'm not gonna fight. There's, I'm, I'm not. They probably gonna run over me already. Okay. Um, I got a hole in that hand, and as you can tell. Okay. I'm Detective Murphy from American Insurance sure Office. Okay. And I think you know why I'm here to talk to you. Okay. Before we talk or anything, I have to advise you of your rights. You understand that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Night. You read and write the English language? Yes, sir. Can you understand me well? Yes, sir. Okay. Look at me for a second. You okay? Mm-hmm. You not hurt or anything besides those little bruises? I got a hole in my hand, four broken fingers, cuts all the way down. Look at this knee. I got one knee. Bigger than the other, because that one's out of place right now. Okay. Well, we'll talk about all that in just a second, okay? All right. I need you to hold your head up so you can talk to me. I need you. I don't need you resting. I want you to make sure you clearly understand everything I'm about to ready to tell you, okay? And can you sit up for me in the chair? You have the right to remain silent. Can you look at me? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You understand me so far? I need a verbal yes or no from you. Yes, sir. Okay. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. You understand that? Yes, sir. If you, if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questions if you wish. You understand that? Yes, sir. Do you understand? I'm sorry. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Do you understand each of these rights I have explained to you? Yes, sir. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to, it says us here, but I'm saying me. Do you wish to talk to me now? Um, I'd like to get one phone call because I, I need to get on with somebody. I need to call my lawyer. You want to talk to a lawyer? Is that what you're telling me? I mean, I'll talk to you, but I don't want to call my dad. I want to call my dad. Hold on a second. You just said you want to talk to a lawyer. Did you want to talk to a lawyer or do you want to talk to me? I want to clarify that first. I'm going to talk to a lawyer. Okay. Is there any way I can go get some help though for this shit? Yes, sir. Like, I mean, bad. Like, I'm hurting bad right now. Okay. I mean, the, the next question I'm, I'm going to ask you are, are you willing to come back to Marion County with me voluntarily, or do you want to be booked in here to Broward County's jail? I'll come back with you. I'm sorry. Huh? I'll come with you to Marion County. Okay. All right. I, I got a question on what, what's going on. I have no idea. What, what, what the hell is going on? I think you clearly know. I can't talk to you about anything. You've already requested your attorney. You lost that opportunity to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Okay? So where am I going from here? You're going to go right here inside this jail, inside this holding cell, until I get finished talking to some more, some more people. All right. And then am I going to Marion County? Yeah, yes, sir. All right. Can I, can I get some help, though? Yes, sir. Like, for real? Have seen that green chair against the wall? James Williams, is that correct? Yes, sir. Is this address here correct? Yes, sir. your contact number for your cell phone number, home number? <laughs> I just got, actually I give you my model number, I just got a new cell phone today and I don't even know the number to be honest with you. Um, I can get it for you though. I'm sure Daniel's got it. Pick your phone number. No, I don't have it on. You don't have your own? It's in the car. Okay. It's in the car. But this is your mom's number? Yeah. It'll be 904-964-6711. And I can't get my other number as soon as. Hold on, hold on just one second, okay?
that, sir. Mm -hmm. Give you my card, okay? Mm -hmm. Detective Gray from Marion County Sheriff's Office here in Ocala, Florida. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Williams, I understand that you have some knowledge of what, what someone told you? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you raise your right hand for a moment? Because uh, you saw me swear the statement about giving the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me how you became involved in this and what, what knowledge do you have? About okay. That? I just run down everything exactly to the T as what happened. Okay. Yesterday, I got a call um, from him, actually from my daughter, wanting to know if he could come up and stay at my house for a couple of days. At which point she didn't tell me anything more than that. And then he called shortly thereafter. And I said, well, he said, he said look, I got in an altercation in Ocala. The place I was living, got into a fight, and I just, they threw me out of the house and I needed a place to stay for a few days while things cool down. I said, well, okay, come on. He says, I'm on my way. I said, okay. Thought it was kind of a little odd. So he asked you if he, if he can come stay at your house? Yes. I said, okay, you know, a couple days, whatever, just, you know. Of course, he didn't tell me anything like what was really happening. And I said, okay, fine. So he shows up, and this was yesterday. How did he show up to your house? Oh, okay, that, okay, he, told, he called me up to, for directions. I'm trying to give him directions. Obviously, neither one of them, whoever the other guy, which I'd never even seen myself. Mm -hmm. So I was playing that to you. Was driving him up here, a friend is, I presume, what he said. And they ended up not following the directions. They ended up going all the way to Lake City. And on I-75 and coming across Providence Highway and they didn't even know how to get to my house from there. So at which point he asked me, is there any way I could meet him up there in Lake Butler to show him the way back to my house? And I said, all right. So instead of myself going, I sent my son. I said, Jimmy, go up there, meet him at um, Jackson Building Supply, right across from the- What's your son's um, name? James Williams, Jr. Um, told him to meet him. Right at, right at Jackson's Building Supply, right there in um, Lake Butler. Told them boys how to get there, and Jimmy knew how to get there. I said, show them the way where'd back. You, where'd you meet him at, I'm sorry? He met them at Jackson Building Supply. Jackson? Is that what you're saying, Jackson? Jackson Building Supply is the name of the hardware store. That's right by Spires. Okay. They met him right in that in that area somewhere. He was big, um, Mike was looking for the Lincoln, he knew my car. Okay. He was looking for Lincoln. They met him, and I assumed they were going to follow Jimmy, my son, back to my house. Was your son with anyone else? Well, I don't think so. I think he was by himself. Definitely. You telling me you didn't go down there? No, I didn't go down there. Not at all. Okay. And the only reason is because I was needing to go to bed okay. to go to work, and I work a, a, a graveyard shift. Okay. I'm not sure if Greg went down there with him or not. I honestly don't recall if he went by himself or Greg might have went with him. It was my nephew who went back to Sarasota. Okay. I'm, I'm not even sure I'll let him answer that, but I think Greg might have been with him, but I'm not possible to be honest name. with you. Um, Stead. Spell it. S-T-I-D. S-T-I-D. I'm not sure if it's D or D-D. I think it's S-T-I-D. Stead. Okay. Okay, so they went and met with them. They went to meet with them to show them the way back to my house. They went to meet them in Lake Butler to show them the way back to my house. Okay. They did, did he just get in a vehicle with your son? Or that's, what he, that's what ended up happening. Okay. And the boy that was riding, Mike's friend or whatever, said, well, look, I'm just going to jump back on the interstate. You can jump in the car with him. Okay. And they can take you back to the house. Okay. And I said, oh, well, okay. You know, and I'm talking to him on the phone the whole time. I'm telling Jimmy, okay, did you meet him? He should be meeting him right up here at Spires or at the Jackson Building Supply. You know, and Jimmy said, yep, there he is right there. And he seen us, you know, and then they, they brought back the house. Okay. At which point, I just assumed that what he told me was exactly what was going on. Okay. We hung out for a little while. I went to bed. Well, I get up at 10 o'clock, 9.30 tonight to go to work, be work at 10.30. 
and right before I go to work, he says, Jim, he says, I, I gotta tell you something, man. He said, I haven't been real honest with you. I haven't told you exactly what happened. I said, well, what are you talking about? And he said, you know, and he started getting all emotional and I kind of figured it was something. You know, and I said, what's going on, Mike? And he says, he said, Jimmy, he said, at that point, I believe he said yesterday or the day before, I believe he said the day before, um, that somebody had raped his little sister and he shot him eight times and killed him. This is exactly what he told me. And I started talking to him and I said, look, man, I said, I'm telling you right now, I don't need no trouble like this. And I said, you don't either. <coughs> the best thing for you to do is turn yourself in. <clears throat> I got talking to him about that. <clears throat> And he pretty much agreed that that's what he was going to do. He said he was going to call his father to come get him. <clears throat> well, at this point, I didn't want to leave, but I got a, a, a messed up job where I work. And there's no way I can contact anybody at work. <coughs> Excuse me. So, where do you work at? Gilman Building Products in Lake Butler. Okay. The maintenance man. So, what I did is I told them, I didn't tell them I was going to be right back. I told him, you call your dad and have him come get you. You know, and turn yourself in. Uh -huh. I took off, went straight to work, punched in, went and sat down with my boss man and told him exactly what was going on. And then I was going back to take this boy downtown to turn himself in. Okay. And at which point I came back and met y'all there. Cops were already there. And, you know, I was probably gone 30 minutes. Maybe a little more. 40 minutes at the tops. Okay. So he told you tonight that he hadn't been truthful with you. Yes. That he's going to be uh, be honest to you, yes. be honest with you. Yes. And Mike told you that the day before, which is, which is Sunday. Uh, yeah. Because day is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That uh, that somebody raped his little sister. Yep. And that he shot he shot him eight times and killed him. Yep. Exactly. Did he give you any details of what he did? No. Nothing. No. That was it. That was it. Okay. And then you kind of talked to him, told him that he needed yeah, to turn himself around. Right. Up. And at what point he started getting emotional, you know, and of course, you know, I, I kind of, I don't know the boy. I've met him four times. Uh -huh. He's my daughter's boyfriend. And he's Chris. been, yes, that's my daughter. And he's been up to my house to stay the night, like three or four different times. Okay. Maybe only three times, but I think I've met him four times. And just briefly, you know, for a night or whatever. Uh -huh. And usually I'm having to work, so you know, there. my daughter is just basically coming up to visit and bringing him up, and you know, they spend a night and go back the very next day. Okay. And that's all I know of him. I don't know him personally at all. I thought he, well, other than his looks, with his earrings and his lip rings and tattoos and stuff, I thought he was a, you know, a, a respectful. You know, seemed like a good, honest kid to me, other than his appearance, yeah, appearance, which I, you know, bashed him on to begin with. You know, just, but that's just me. But you know, I, I kind of overlooked it and thought, well, he seems like a pretty good kid, okay. and let it go with that. Okay. Anything and, else that I haven't asked you, and you think I should know? I can't think of one single thing. Like I said, this has all been a big so shock basically, to me. The day before on the 18th when he came to your house, he contacted you and said he wanted he needed a place to stay. He got into a fight at the house. Um, got kicked and out of his house. He got kicked out. He needed a place to stay for a couple of days. While things cooled down. And then he came to your house and then just before you got ready to go to work, he confided tonight. and disclosed to you that he had killed somebody. That's right. Okay. And I would never even have left my house if it would have been the situation with my job. Right. Because I was talking to him right then about turning myself in at the last minute I'm looking at my clock and I'm like I gotta, I gotta go punch in and, and I understand which that. I didn't tell him I was coming right back right I told him you know I convinced him and he said I'm trying to get a hold of my dad yeah you know, I made up my mind I'm gonna have my dad come get me and I'm gonna turn myself in okay I said son that's the best thing he can do okay and uh, do you know if you told anybody else what he did I have no idea that your wife had said the house I have no idea I don't know no, you don't have any idea if that's your wife at the house no, that's not my wife. Okay, who's the pregnant lady? That's my girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. All right. I apologize. Right. That's fine. That's fine. You don't know if you told if you told your girlfriend anything. And she said he did after he told me. Okay. But see, nobody. I guess they didn't say nothing to me 
Okay. Because he didn't say that. I mean, at which point, at which point, I don't know what he told anybody else. I honestly don't know. Okay. All right. Well, let me talk to your girlfriend. I'm gonna talk to your son, okay. and then uh, is Josh your son or Josh? No, he's a neighbor. My okay. son's friend. All right. Thank you very much. Right, I appreciate it. Here's, here's your ID back. Okay. All right. I have to see my green chair that's against the wall. Okay. Let me get some information from you. What's your name? Crystal. Spell it for me. C-R-Y-S-P-A-O. Your middle name? Danielle. Your last name? Anderson. Your date of birth? 117.82. And you live at that house that we just met? Yes, sir. What's that address again? 9796 Northwest County Road, 225 Stark, Florida, 32091. Now, do you have a cell phone or, or yes, house sir. phone or anything to get in contact with you with? Um, my cell phone number is. Um, Nine oh four two six three two two zero one. Okay. You raise your right hand for me. You saw me swear the statement that you're about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Okay. How did you become involved, or in, what knowledge do you have about this case? Um. Kristen had called James yesterday, which is my fiance. Okay and had asked him now were you there present when all this was going on yes okay and had asked if my kid james is her dad yes if mike could come spend the night and he was like yeah i guess and um kristen had told him say why mm -mm. okay and then the next thing I knew was that he was on his way to our house. And then Jimmy, which is... What, what, what day did all this here occur on? The, it was yesterday. The, I'm sorry, I've been, I've been working. What's the day? The day is um, Monday. So they said it was Monday. No, today is... It, well, today it's is Tuesday. Tuesday. So it was... Um, Monday, the um, 18th. Okay. So on Monday, Christian called her dad, which is James, and said, hey, can Mike, can, can Mike can, come stay at the house? Yes. And he said yes. Right. And then what happened after that? And then Jimmy, which is Christian's brother, mm -hmm. went to meet him in Lake Butler and picked him up. Well, um, he was there and he, the kids were on the porch and I was in. So Jimmy went and picked Mike up from Lake Butler? Yes, sir. Okay, what happened after that? They come back to the house mm -hmm. and they were all sitting on the porch. And it's I all was, Monday night? Yes, sir. Okay. And I was in the kitchen cooking. I was, I don't know what they talked about when they were out there because I wasn't out there. And then after I got done cooking, and I got Jim up to go to work, and he left, and Mike's like, can I talk to you? And I was like, yeah, what do you need to talk to me about? He's like, I, I need to talk to you about something. I was like, okay. I was like, are you in any kind of trouble or anything? And he was like, yeah. I was like, well, you know, what did you do now? And I, and he wouldn't answer me there for a minute. And I said, well, were you breaking in houses again? And I'm like, are you in that kind of trouble? And he held his head down and he started to cry. And he's like, no, it's worse than that. I'm like, what do you mean it's worse than that? And he said that he lived with a family that was like his own family. And he said that the little girl that lives there, that's 15 years old, said that 
her boyfriend had raped her. And I was like, oh my God, are you for real? And he's like, yeah, and he's like, I killed him. I said, what? I said, what did you do? And then he said that him and some other people, I don't remember their names, but um, one of them had hit him with a stick. So Mike told you that the 15-year-old girl was raped. Right. And that he killed the guy who raped her. Right. He said that another that another guy, it's the girl's brother, but I, I don't remember his name. Okay. The, the victim girl. Right. Said that it was her brother was beating him with some kind of stick thing. And that he shot him eight times. And I was like, what? You did what? And he's like, yeah, I shot him like four times in the house. And then I shot him like three times outside. And he said, then I drug him back in the house and I put him in the bathtub. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch what you say. You shot four times in the house? Yes. And then three times? In the yard because he was running out okay. as my question. So after the three times you shot him in the yard, what happened next? He drug him in the house. Mm -hmm. And Mike placed the victim in the bathroom. In the bathtub and he started beating him. Who started beating him? Mike started being the guy he shot. Okay. And then he said that he beat him some more and he shot him in the face. And um, he beat him some more and he shot him again. And then he said, Where did you shot him again? In the face. So you shot him in the face twice? Yes. Okay. While he was in the bathroom, in the bathtub. Okay. And then he said that later on that night that they had built a fire uh -huh. and that they had burned that dude that they had killed and said that whenever, or no, I'm sorry, they, he wrapped him in his sleeping bag. Wrapped him in a sleeping bag before he burned him? Yeah, and then he burned him in the sleeping bag. And then whenever they got, he got his body burnt and everything, his skull wasn't all the way burnt. And he said he took his skull and pulled his teeth out one by one with a pair of pliers. And he said that after he did that, that he took five gallon buckets and put the ashes in the buckets. And um, him and the dude, the girl stepdad. What kind of bucket was this? A five gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. That him and the girl's stepdad had drove them to some place where he, they go swimming at and had took center blocks and tied them to the bucket and threw his body in the river. So, so him and the girl's dad Took the the um, the body they put into the five gallon buckets, took it to a swimming hole, and then they disposed of it inside the water. Yes, sir. And I asked him what what he killed that guy with that well that kid, and he said that he used a 
a 22. I want to I wanna say you said a 22 cap birth. Uh -huh. With a silencer on it. And he said he threw that in the river too, where they dumped the body. You said a river or? Where they were they go swimming on. Okay. I, I'm assuming it's a river. Okay. So he disposed of the gun that he he killed the guy with in this in this in this modern body of water. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else that he told you? That was all. That was it. Okay. Did you believe what he told you? At first I did and and then like he was talking about it today. And he called his dad, and his dad told him that's what had busted through their house. And they were looking for him, and I told him, I said, Mike, I said, you got to tell Jim what's going on. You got, you got to tell him. I said, I can't let him get in no trouble because you want to be crazy. And after he had told Jim, and Jim left to go to work, I was scared. I got scared because I had walked outside and he was cutting his wrist with a knife. And I flipped out. I was like, what are you doing? And I, I had called my cousin that was across the road, but nobody was home because I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Okay. And is that when we showed up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, okay? okay. I'm not going to be in the control or in love. No, ma'am. Did you partake in any, any of this? No, sir. Okay. There's no way that you can be in any trouble, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to take you out and talk to you. So that be your stepson? Mm hmm And then his friend? Okay. In the green chair along the wall. Yes, sir. Along the wall. Yes, sir. See ya. You okay? Yes, sir. You have your ID on you? Yes, sir. No? Yes, sir. I know you told me at the house we were going to go through it again, okay? Right. What's your name? James Williams. James Allen Williams. James. What's your date of birth? 3192. You got to speak up and clear. March 1st, 92. What's, what's your address? 9796 Northwest County Road 225 Star. You have a phone number? Yes, sir. What is it? 352. One second. I don't, I don't even know my own phone number. 359 8106. Raise your right hand for me. You saw him swear the statement that, that you're about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me your involvement or your knowledge of this case. Um, he's my sister's boyfriend mm -hmm. for roughly two years. Uh, we, my sister had... Who was your sister? What's her name? Okay. Uh, she had said that Mike was coming up here, and I didn't exactly know why I met him. When did she tell you this? She didn't tell me. I I found out actually from my dad, Daniel, okay. that he was coming up. So you learned this from your dad that, and Daniel, that, that he, he was, was coming, coming up. up? Yes, sir. And I met him and another guy and Blake Butler at Spires, IJ. Did you know why he was coming to the house? Not until he got here. And he had told me. So you met him and another guy? Yes, sir. I don't know the other guy's name. I know he's in red truck. I believe it was a Ford. Met him another guy in Lake Butler? Yes, sir. What happened after that? We rode back to my house. Who was we? Me, my cousin, and... And who, who was with you? Greg, Gregory Allen stood. 
Gregory? Yes, sir. What's his last name? Stid. He actually just went back to Sarasota today. Spell his last? S-T-I-D-D. You have a phone number for him? Yes, sir. 941-225-3556. Okay, and he was with you when you picked up Mike? Yes, sir. And Mike was in his truck with this uh, red truck with this guy? Yes, sir. Okay, so you picked Mike up in Lake Butler? Yes, sir. And you, what did you do after that? We brought him back to my house. Mm -hmm. We hung out that night, and see, he told me that the reason he was up here is because he got in a fight with a black male, and he had a cousin that was looking for him. That he was in a fight with a black male? Yes, sir. And the black male's cousin was looking for him? Yeah, and he needed to get out, get away from where he was until I calmed down. And then I learned tonight. Hold on. Okay. Then I learned tonight that. And I'm sorry, what day did he come to your house? Yesterday. He stayed last night. That's all. So that'd, be, that'd be Monday? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Today is. Yeah. Today is actually Wednesday. Wednesday, but it's really Tuesday. I've been on home for a while. Okay. So he stayed at your house. He told you basically that uh, he got into a fight with a black guy. Mm -hmm. The black guy's cousin was looking for him. He needed a place to lay low for a couple of days. He, he said at your he house. was going to get jumped, da 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 da, and he wanted to get the hell out of there. Okay. Well, then tonight I learned that, or today, when we were at Walmart and stuff, we went to Walmart. I wrote, we went to Walmart like three times now today. But anyways, he was talking to my cousin Greg's girlfriend and me and, and me and Danielle, we all went home. Well, anyways, he was saying all this book about he did, he shot somebody eight times, da 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 So he told you he shot somebody eight times? Am I going to get in trouble for saying any of this? Did you have any involvement in it? No. Okay, so I'm just trying to learn what he told you. Okay. So he told you he shot somebody eight times? Yeah. And then that he supposedly burnt. See, I didn't want to believe him because he'd been talking about it too much. And I figured someone really did that. They wanted. Okay, but just tell me what he said. That he, that they burnt him at his house. Burnt the body? Yeah. Okay. And then they put him in bygone buckets and they put him in like. And I didn't I honestly believe him because he was talking too much about it. And I figured if someone really did that, they wouldn't talk about it like that. I guess I'm wrong. Anything else he told you? And then tonight, he was trying to get a hold of my sister. And so was I because after I learned that, I'm like, what's up with my sister? I want to know what's up with my sister. Mm -hmm. And I, I started blowing up my sister's phone and her friend Katrina's phone. Mm -hmm. And no one texted me back to, I guess they just got their phones back. And then, and I just told my girlfriend this. And, Is that when we showed her about the house? And I said, something bad is going to happen. And dad's going to make him turn. See, my dad told me, or told him, all right, he went to my dad because he was staying there. And he told everybody there that he got in a fight. Well, I guess. He called his dad off of my buddy Josh's phone, and his dad that said that said swap us down his door, and I said holy sh. So I I'm like okay maybe he is for real, and then I called my girlfriend and then we were sitting out there by the barn. Me and Josh went out front to smoke a cigarette, and I seen 500 cars. So I walked out back to see what that was going on, and then that's when we were there. Yeah. Okay. Just want to try to sum this up that you pretty much learned from your dad that Mike was going to be coming down to the house to stay. Yep. Your, dad, your dad told you to go pick Mike and, up. And my sister. And my sister. Okay, but my your sister. sister didn't show up. Yeah. Okay. But your dad told you to go meet Mike. You met Mike and Lake Butler. Because they were lost. And you picked, you picked Mike up yep. from a guy driving a red pickup truck. Uh, Mike told you that he needed a place to stay. Basically, got in a fight with a guy. The guy cousin was looking for him. Uh, he needed a place to lay low. You say on, on the 19th, which would be the next day, Tuesday, and he, had, he ended up telling you, was he bragging about it? it? Yeah, a lot. 
and then just tonight, actually. He so he's bragging. He told you yeah. that, he, that he had shot a guy eight times. He burnt with the gas bottle. You said he shot him eight times with the twenty-two. Yeah, that's what he said. And he's and the, supposedly the gun were still at his dad's house. I don't know, but he kept on saying he got rid of the disposable. That was a disposable. And then he was saying if they got rid of my gun. I guess I'm assuming his dad's house, because from what I know, because we picked him up a couple of times. See my sister and him come up here on the weekends and hang out and do barbecue and stuff. And see, I've always, when we drop my sister off at work, we always drop him off at his house, uh -huh. which is right off of 480 or in Bellevue. Uh -huh. And I've always pretty much, I think it's his grandma's house. I'm pretty sure his dad lives there with him. And I've always, We've always dropped him up there, so I'm assuming that's where it was. I don't know. Okay. And he said his guns and all this shit was there. And that, and I, I kind of thought it was funny too, because he didn't bring that. Okay. That's it? Pretty much it. Okay. All right, and you said Josh knows more too, all right? Josh, I don't know exactly honestly what he knows, but I know, I'm pretty sure he knows. Okay, well, let, let, me, let me just talk to Josh. I don't want you to speak later or speak to speak okay. Paul. Let's get happy. And then another person you can talk to is Renee. Where, where's Renee at? Uh, she's at her house now. Spell her name for me. Is it two R names? R E N E. Man. R E N N E. What's Renee's last name? Heading. H E A D I N G. I'm assuming. What's your phone number? 904 263 8268. And see, she, he was also bragging to her in the Walmart parking lot. Okay. Because we went to go return a phone today, and Danielle had to go in and return a phone and all that, and we sat in the parking lot. We took two different vehicles. She drove her car and drove my, my dad's. Okay. And we didn't want to feel like sitting in Walmart all day, so we went outside the parking lot and they were talking and he was really fucking with her about it. Okay. All I was right. like, oh, you're scared? Shit, like, see under my nails, that's really him? Okay. He was telling me how he snapped his ankle and all kinds of stuff. And that's why I was angry because I learned that and I knew my dad said that he was coming back to the tournament. He had to go punch an orc so he didn't lose his job. And I mean, me and Daniel, or mainly Daniel, I didn't have no part of it when they talked. But Daniel said that you better tell Jen tonight. And if you don't, I don't know what she said, honestly, but I know okay. she made him tell him tonight. Okay. And then he did. And I was on the phone with my girlfriend. Okay. And well, let me, let me talk to Josh and see what Josh has to tell him. All right. All right. I have a seat on the chair, get the green chair against the wall. Yes. You got Is your current address right here? Yes, sir. Okay. You have a phone? What's that phone number? 94. That cell phone number? Yes. 263-8971. Okay. Raise your right hand for me. You saw him swore the statement that you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me your knowledge of your involvement in this case here. I have no involvement in it, but... Okay. All I know is he told me that he shot this dude. What day did he tell you this? Today. I just got there not long after before y'all pulled up. Okay. But he was telling me that if he shot. Who, who told you this? Mike. Mike told me that he shot this dude because he raped his stepsister and he put him in the tub and. Hold on a second. 
He shot the guy because he raped his stepsister? Yes. And what, what else happened after that? He told, Mike told me that he drug him up the stairs, put him in the tub, and after he was dead, he still kept shooting him. And that's about all I know. Mean. What kind of tub was this, in the house or out of the house? In the house. Okay. Like a bathtub? Yes, sir. Well, that's what I assume it is. Okay, but he told you, you put him in the tub, and what do you do that? Well, I mean, what do you do after that? He shot him a bunch more times, made sure he was dead, and then he drug him through the woods, and that's about all I know. Like I said, I wasn't there long before y'all pulled up. So I just want to make sure Mike told you that he shot this shot a guy because he raped his sister. Yeah, and oh yeah, he did tell me partially because Mike's on a gang. And the other dude came by flashing his game, and he shot him because of that, too. So that was partially the reason he shot him, too. Because the guy was involved in a gang? And he was in another gang. So he was in the opposite gang that yeah. he was in? So the victim was a part of another gang? Yes, sir. So I just want to make sure that Mike told you tonight that he that he had shot a guy because he raped his sister, and that he was involved in a in a, an opposing gang gang. Yes, sir. And that um, drugged the guy in the house. Yes, sir. Put him in a tub, shot him some more. Yes, sir. And then he drug his body across into some woods. Yes, sir. What else did he do after that? Or what else did he tell you after that? I honestly cannot remember. Okay. Well, there was a. Uh, because it wasn't my business. You, you had know. told me there at the house, you had pointed to some burn thing that you guys had, had out there. Oh, uh, the phone? Yeah, and you had told us that he had threw his phone in there. Yes, sir. When did that happen? When he was talking to you about this? No, it was a little bit after. Okay. But you saw him dispose of his phone? Yes, sir. I walked outside. I walked out the house, and I seen him break it in half, and then put it on a brick, and took another brick, and started busting it, and he threw it in the burn barrel. So you, you watched him break the cell phone up and he disposed of it into inside that, that burn yes, barrel? Okay, anything else? That's it? That's about all I can remember. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Okay? Yes, sir. I'll walk you out. All right.